So as a fun little weekend mental exercise slash palate cleanser slash I don't want to get too rusty with my angular skills, uh, I wanted to see if I could implement a word search puzzle grid. And the idea behind a word search is that you have a, a list of words, and here you can see I have a bunch of JavaScript related words, and I'm going to generate a letter grid that contains as many of those words as possible. So I click generate, and you can see here are my, uh, my letters, and um, we can see that this works, but let's look for debuggers. So if we look for the G's, uh, let's look for the double G, there it is. So you can see here we have debugger. So all of these words, or as many of the words as possible, have been packed into this letter grid, and the idea is to try and find those words, kind of like a where's Waldo of words, if you will. Um, and if we look at the console, what we'll see uh, is that this will log which words make it into the list, and which words don't make, or which words are omitted from the letter grid. And the reason that some are omitted is one, um, we can see things like Java could theoretically completely overlap with JavaScript, so we don't want to include it. Um, and then some words like throw simply couldn't be fit into the into the grid. And in fact, if we clear this and we generate again, what you'll see is that the words that don't make it actually change over time. Yield Java, 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 Yield Java. Let's see if we can get another one. That's not yield. Parse. And the reason that uh, this changes over time is because the letters and the words are applied to the letter grid randomly. So just by random chance, sometimes they make it, sometimes they don't, based on the orientation of the various letters in the letter grid. So let's take a look at how this works. Uh, the bulk of this logic is actually just vanilla JavaScript, or I should say vanilla TypeScript in this case. Um, the Angular code is actually very minimal, and we can see uh, we're going to be using this word packer TypeScript class and all the word packer does, or I should say all, our, all that our Angular code does, is take the input and then use a static method here on the word packer to instantiate a word packer instance for a letter grid of this dimensions and pass in the words. And the word packer essentially does all of the heavy lifting behind the scenes and produces a letter grid, which is what we're rendering to the screen, and a list of words that made it into the letter grid and a list of words that were skipped or cannot be fit into the letter grid. And then the HTML for this, super, super simple. All we're doing is using a traditional table tag. And you can see we're looping over the rows of this letter grid. And then for each row, we're outputting uh, the individual letters. And that's it. That's basically the extent of the Angular code. Again, the rest of this is, um, is a TypeScript code. And let's take a look at what that TypeScript code is doing. So again, I have this word packer class, and this is gonna be using a very brute force algorithm. So essentially it picks locations randomly, checks to see if the word fits, uh, and then if it doesn't, it moves on to another location. Um, so we can jump down here to the static method for that create word packer, and the static method in this case is really just a utility method to make this easier for the calling context. So essentially, if we didn't have the static method, we would have had this logic inside of our app component, but since this is gonna be the way that the word packer gets used traditionally, we might as well package it in something that's clean and easy to consume. So you can see it instantiates its own instance. It takes the words, it sorts them based on their length with the longest ones first, because I figured the getting the longer words into the letter grid first will make it uh, more likely that we'll be able to get more words because the smaller the words are, the more they can act as sort of just filler words. Then for each word, we try to pack it into the word packer, and then eventually we just finalize, which just means we fill in the rest of the empty, uh, the empty locations on the letter grid with random letters, and then we return the packer. Now, there's quite a bit of code here, a couple hundred lines, but most of them are in this uh, try to add word. So what the try to add word is gonna do is start with a random location on the grid. So for example, let's say starting with this row and column, and then it's going to iterate over the entire grid or at max over the entire grid, which we know is the area of the grid or the width times the height of that letter grid. And then for each attempt, i.e. each location on the letter grid, it's going to iterate over a list of directions, which just means like, are you adding it down? up, across, diagonal, diagonal down and left, so on and so forth. For each one of those directions, it's gonna to try to add the letters 
at that location using that direction. And if it doesn't fit there, it's going to move on to the next location in the grid using a linear scan, which just means we're going to go across, 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 then down one, then across, across, across. So it's going to traverse the entire surface area of the letter grid looking for locations that can fit the word. The first one it hits that matches, we just return true. So we don't necessarily have to test the entire grid every time. We're just testing until we either hit a matching location that can fit the word or we return false, ultimately indicating that the word wasn't able to fit into the letter grid. The try to add letters and directions, jump up to that. Um, what, we can, what, we, what it does is essentially it loops over the letters, checks to see if the location in question has gone off the grid, return false, or if the location in the grid is either not empty, or if it is empty, but it, uh, sorry, <laughs> It's either empty or if it's not empty that it doesn't match the particular letter, right? Because we want to have overlapping letters if possible, just to pack the grid tightly. Um, and if we make it this far, we can assert that the letters fit in the grid. And at this point, we actually go about mutating the grid by looping back over the letters and adding each letter in turn to the particular location in the grid. Uh, and the rest of the methods here are kind of just helper methods to make some of this easier. The randomization of letters, the randomization of uh, integers, um, splitting things, normalizing them, and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to go into any more detail here. Um, but anyway, this, this was just kind of a, a fun little experiment. Um, and you can see that the, uh, the list is actually stored here in the URL. So you could, let's say we add in a bunch of A's and a bunch of B's a bunch of C's and a bunch of D's and a bunch of E's and a bunch of F's, right? And then we generate the search. You can see now that these all get added here, right? So you could copy and paste this to someone else if you wanted to, but we can also use this to see where they show up, right? Here's our letters, or here's our A's, here's our diagonal of B's, here's our C's, and you can see that they're showing up in different orientations, right? E's, F's, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So this just generates the grid. Um, perhaps in a subsequent demo, I'll look at uh, now adding some sort of interaction so that you can actually perform the, the search itself as opposed to just generating the, the grid. But this was a fun uh, code kata slash uh, palette cleanser slash skills reinforcement. Um, I know I've been focused on Lucy CFML a lot lately, so I just wanted to balance it out with some fun at work. And uh, and I just love Angular. It's uh, just a joy to work with. So hopefully that was interesting.